So, you may remember, uh, it wasn't that long ago, I did a video about uh, what was going on with more Blizzard's bullshit. And just before BlizzCon, you may remember, I talked about how what they'd done was, for the World of Warcraft tournaments, they'd essentially disappeared half a million dollars. And that was, they were talking about how they would match half a million dollars in this uh, crowdfunded prize pool but the crowdfunded prize pool went so far beyond and hit 2.6 million dollars that they just said hey that's a lot guys so we're just gonna keep our half a million dollars right here we're just gonna we don't need to put it in congrats you did it all well done so that is obviously scummy as fuck <laughs> and very misleading and upset a lot of the world of warcraft uh, community as you would imagine um, especially the competitive community that would have benefited from that prize pool being added on because it would have meant more prize money for the people that were competing in the tournaments so one of the things that happened in between me streaming and doing some of the stuff and doing the style out of stuff and working on all these stories was that um D darry known as at shut up darry but that is uh, shanna darry roberts the general manager of method who of course this legendary organization when it comes to competitive world of warcraft you know getting all the world firsts and stuff like that um they came out and made a very definitive statement about what happened in this long twit longer and again, I, I think I retweeted this out at the time because this is obviously going back last month now. This was like, you know, uh, in November, middle of November. But uh, again, it, it is now an unequivocal because there were some people going, no, nah, Blizzard didn't do that. They didn't mean that. They didn't say that. They wouldn't do that. But they, yet they absolutely did do that. And it goes to show some people do have a backbone and have balls in this business because this is someone who has a lot to lose. If Activision Blizzard ever decided to like not allow Method to be involved in World of Warcraft anymore, but uh, came out and explicitly said everything that uh, was going on in regards to that. So let me just uh, give, give it to you. Um, and also as well, in this twit longer, points out some unbelievable uh, stuff as well. Um, as the, as the general manager of Method and a long-standing representative of our WoW esports teams and players, I was asked to make a statement by several of our players regarding a few issues at 2019's BlizzCon. These feelings and thoughts are my own, and while they are supported and encouraged by our players, they may not be shared by all who are signed with the Method organization. Man, what a refreshing air of professionalism that is. I'm the manager. I'll carry the can. The players don't have to say anything publicly. I'll come out and I'll also act as an umbrella to protect my players from any reprisals by saying, I'm not going to tell you who agrees with this, who told me to say this, who signed off on it. This is all me. All right? Not bad, eh? Like, fuck me. There are some people out there that can do their job. I was incredibly concerned and disappointed when the WoW Esports announced that the AWC MDI. Uh, prize pool at blizzcom was being fully funded by fans and no contribution would be made by blizzard themselves while esports competitors have had to deal with earning significantly less than other competitors at blizzcon for many years and again this is absolutely true if you go look at just the prize pools for what is ostensibly not just one of their flagship games one of their most popular games a game that still has a subscription fee uh, it's the game that essentially propelled Blizzard beyond, you know, sure, Warcraft was big, Starcraft was big. Nothing changed the market space for those guys more than World of Warcraft. And yet it's always been neglected, um, like the unpopular sibling. Um, but for anybody that's curious, just go look, go back to like all the BlizzCons and look and compare all the prize pools and then look at World of Warcraft competitive prize pools and they are atrocious um compared to even games that are supposedly dead i mean you know remember this is a company that propped up heroes of the storm when the numbers weren't there and world of warcraft was probably doing better numbers and making the company more money and then go look at the two prize pools it's insane the difference anyway uh so 
the prize funded, uh, sorry, the crowdfunded prize pool was embraced enthusiastically by the players and fans when Blizzard announced earlier that the half a million dollar combined AWC MDI prize pool would be supplemented by 25% of the total sales from two new toys in World of Warcraft. The split would be 12.5% per esport under the WoW esports umbrella. Players and their support teams, whether it was via organizations like Method or their families and friends, began actively campaigning in their streams, on their social media channels, and other means to encourage the sale of these toys. It's impossible to know how many of the 2.6 million in toy sales were generated by these players, who thought that for the first time, they were going to perhaps have a combined prize pool close to the $1 million level that has been standard in other Blizzard esports. For the record... If Blizzard had maintained their original half a million prize pool and then added the $660,000 from toy sales, WoW Esports would have indeed seen a $1.1 million prize pool. Okay? So think about that. They took the players and they said, hey, we're going to do this great initiative and we will match up to half a million dollars. Right? We're going to put half a million dollars in. So all the players went out and they hustled. And some of these guys, some of the biggest streamers, again, people probably don't realize this. There's like some of the biggest streamers on Twitch are World of Warcraft guys. And some of the biggest people kind of on that platform and, 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 and even on Twitter have like huge followings in the World of Warcraft guys. It's like World of Warcraft's just its own thing. Like you're either you're either you're either into it or you ain't. And especially the competitive side. And all of these guys and all of these organizations, and Method especially, who are huge in World of Warcraft, they went out and they promoted Blizzard's toy sales. Now, again, remember, this is like some Valve shit. They raised $2.6 million in, in toy sales, but only 660000 of it actually trickled down into the tournament. So that's essentially $2 million that these guys went out and made for Blizzard just you know, in in advertising the sales of the of these items. So, half a mil, you're one of the most profitable media companies in the world. I don't know how you justify it. But again, the worst part is, because you said you would do it, these guys went out and hustled for you. You didn't do the marketing. The beneficiaries of what they, well, rather, the supposed beneficiaries went and did it for you. They leveraged their platform. They relied upon their fans. They made appeals to people who trust them. And then you withdraw it and you say you're not going to do it and it was a misunderstanding. That is especially unconscionable. That is, that, is, that is outrageous. It is my personal hypothesis that this is exactly what caused the backtracking. Blizzard couldn't allow... AWC or MDI to have bigger individual prize pools than the Hearthstone Grandmasters, the Overwatch World Cup, or StarCraft 2. And that is a very interesting point. There is a perception um, that Blizzard like to project that the esports they are pushing, the esports that they rely upon for their business, especially the ones that, um, like Overwatch, the World Cup, like, there's absolutely no way, because it will be terrible optics to investors, there's no way they will allow World of Warcraft to have a bigger prize pool than the Overwatch prize pool. They just wouldn't do it. Because what does that say about the game? And I'll add to this, and I don't know, if I can't, cause it was a while ago since I read the twit longer, so I, apologies if this comes up later, but I will add to this, and I will categorically underline, when World of Warcraft, uh, oh, thanks for the 5,000 uh, cheers, Gluckster. All the money in the Overwatch drain. Don't worry, in five years, that 5,000 uh, bits or cheers, whatever the fuck they're called, you'll be able to buy an Overwatch franchise with that, mate. So so thanks, I might keep it, I might save it and buy you it in return as a gift. But anyway, the, uh, the, the reality here is when, and I know this from talking to people behind the scenes, remember I'm working on a huge expose about behind the scenes at the Overwatch League. When, when World of Warcraft Classic launched and it got all that exposure and it was the number one watch game on Twitch, there were people who were attached to Overwatch franchises, investors, etc. who said, wait, I thought Overwatch was the biggest game. 
I thought that, like, but what's this over there? And remember, the cost to have a World of Warcraft streamer playing classic associated with your brands is that. A big fat zero. It's whatever you paid them in salary. You didn't have to invest in anything. And people people were going fucking nuts. Because for a month, WoW Classic was the hot shit. So I know enough about Activision Blizzard to know that there are certain esports titles in their portfolio that they absolutely want to be at the forefront and they want people to think everything's great over there. Like, they definitely don't want to acknowledge that Hearthstone is dying on its ass and sticking a fucking auto chess ripoff into it isn't going to fix that. They don't want to acknowledge that. They want everybody to think it's rosy, it's great. Look at all the money. Look at all of this. Look at this. We can get some money from Twitch to broadcast our games. It's all going to be fine. WoW gets completely wrecked because of that. Because it has, it has subscribers. You pay a subscription fee. So it's like it's its own thing. They don't need to worry about broadcasting rights. And they don't need to worry about perceptions here and that. They know the subscribers are going to go up again when the next fucking terrible expansion comes out. And go down again when it doesn't. And go up again when it does. And go down again when it doesn't. They That's just how they're going to roll with it. Um, so I'll add to that. He's absolutely right. They didn't want the optics of WoW, especially after the embarrassment. Remember, nobody at Activision Blizzard wanted WoW Classic. They said it couldn't work. They said you didn't want it. It is the most outrageous, tone-deaf underestimation of a consumer base they probably made in a good while. They said, listen, motherfuckers, we know you don't want this shit. We're never going to give you Classic servers. And then they relented and said, all right, there looks to be enough interest here. And they did it. And then they were like, holy shit, this is actually more popular than fucking any of our games right now. In a 12-month span that featured the agony of cost-cutting and layoffs that rocked Q4 2018 and Q1 of 2019, followed by the ecstasy of a record-breaking Q3 2019, thanks to WoW Classic... Activision perhaps saw a way to cut a cool half a million from the BlizzCon budget that they would pay out to players in Q4 2019 and preserve the big boy status of its other esports. Axe their contribution to the WoW esports prize pool. And again, I think this is a very fair hypothesis. You know, Activision Blizzard, despite being so profitable and so successful, they're a nickel and dime company now. They 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 are they fired one third of the workforce and are hiring people back into the same roles they fired people from on reduced salary, which is why they're embroiled in a fucking lawsuit in France because it violates French labor laws to do that. So they 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 obviously they're not going to cut any fucking corners they can. And they probably looked at the verbiage. Like, what did we actually say we were going to do? Oh, look, we worded it that way. We don't have to give them half a million dollars. Let's just shave that off right away. East, you know, wow, esports looks great because it's still a pretty big prize pool. The biggest it's ever had. And, and, and it, there's no credit or reward to any, any of the work that the wow community put in. And again, it, it's mind-blowing to me that there is a general manager that works in that space that's willing to come out and publicly call Activision Blizzard on their bullshit. Like, what a fucking hero this guy is. Regardless or not of whether my hypothesis is correct, the result was the same. Trust was violated between Blizzard and the players' community. It was a bait and switch that left the players and their management teams reeling in the private WoW Esports Discord. Some players immediately took to social media, others chose to keep their heads down and focus on practice. This was announced just days before BlizzCon. So that's another thing. You think you're going in. Wow, we're going to have a $1 million prize pool. Wah, wah. We're not giving you that half a million that we said we were going to. What a, what a great motivating factor that must be. I want to be clear that I do not think any of the Huawei Sports team at Blizzard had any say at this at all. 
and they were faced with the nauseating task of sharing the prize pool breakdown news with the players and then acting like nothing was wrong to the best of their abilities. Furthermore, they had to face the players in person the same day at the Blizzard HQ during media day, and they did it professionally and with as much grace as possible in the face of a lot of outrage and frustration. I can only speculate that cost cutting from Activision also led to several other disappointments and frustrations for WoW Esports competitors at BlizzCon this year. So that's another key component now of modern Activision Blizzard. The higher-ups make these outrageous decisions, and then they tell the few last remaining endemic esports people, you must go out and present these wildly egregious, unpopular, bullshit decisions that we've made to the community you're from, and if you do not do it good enough, we will fire you. That's why everyone's demoralized at Activision Blizzard. That's why people are leaving in fucking droves. Because you're being made to go out and, like, you can't come out and go, yo, listen, guys, you know me, I'm, I'm wow to the fucking core. Fuck Bobby Kotick. He did this. You don't keep your job. You get fired. So you have to sit there and go, ah, well, actually, yeah, the way it was worded. And you're dead inside. Because you don't believe the words that are coming out your mouth, but you're just saying them to fucking keep your job for maybe another six months before Activision Blizzard try and fuck you again. And then they're going to fire you anyway, because it just so happens they're downsizing your department. So you fucking span a corporate line of bullshit for nothing anyway. That's what it's like to work at Riot right now. The, uh, sorry, Blizzard right now. Sorry, slip in the tongue. That's what it's like to work at Activision Blizzard right now. Probably Riot too. That's what it's like to work at Blizzard right now. It is, it is, um, it, it is, it is inarguably true. I, I talk to Blizzard employees. I've not met a happy one in a long time. No one's coming into work. Zippity doo da, like clicking their fucking heels. No one's doing that anymore. Because it's just, you know, look at that report they put out on Inven Global where they interviewed people from the, like Heroes of the Storm team and talking about how, you know, a new game gets announced and then it's crunch, 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 and you just got to deal with this and deal with that. And they're the public-facing people as well. And the executives that are doing this don't do anything. Look at the report I did, where, you know, uh, morale, all-time low at Activision Blizzard. You know, high-profile people like Kim Fan leaving. And it's all about guys like Pete Vlastelica that come over from fucking Fox Sports, and they don't understand esports, and they don't understand what it means to be a part of a community because they're, like, on a corporate level. You know, he doesn't have to come out and talk to the fans of a game because it's just not what he does. He doesn't know what it's like to actually work your way through the ranks and get hired by what was, you know, a company that was very um you know engaged with the community back in the day and it was like a badge of honor it's like when valve used to hire people from the community it's like wow he's ascended now one of ours one of our own works for the company how could anything go wrong with the game that's what it was like back then they don't understand that they're not from that world they're not from our world let's talk about the other cost cutting stuff they did which this didn't blow up and it wasn't made as popular Facilities for players were, were severely lacking. Only one day of practice facilities were provided to players before competition commenced on Thursday, October 31st. Players were flown in on Sunday. No food was provided. <laughs> Gotta love it. Except one lunch until Wednesday. And players had to scramble to book PC cafes out of their own pocket. Sometimes training up to 30 minutes, uh, traveling up to 30 minutes each way by Uber to ensure they weren't sharing a cafe with the competing team because they're not set up to be soundproof. Many teams were forced to practice alongside other teams due to lack of availability. Once the practice facility was open, the chairs were uncomfortable, there were no snacks, uh, minimal snacks and drinks were provided, and meal options were non-existent uh, for those with special diets. Time-based breakfast coupons meant that some teams and casters missed the one meal entirely if they couldn't show up in the scheduled window to eat. Two. Opening week was deleted and the matches were not streamed. Fans who contributed hundreds of thousands of dollars to support these players couldn't even watch the opening rounds of the matches for AWC or MDI, which were condensed into one day offline on Thursday, the day before BlizzCon. Teams had to play these rounds surrounded by other teams who were playing and practicing. Organizations rely on their signed players having visibility during competitions in order to secure sponsorships, and they were left with half the event being behind closed doors. The opportunity for these players to grow their personal brands by having the matches streamed was cut in half. Don't underestimate the importance here. 
WoW Esports does not pay enough on its own to be a full-time job. Most who choose the path of being a pro player in WoW need sponsorship and streaming to support themselves. So, it just shows this, like, why not just fucking admit, like, you just don't give a fuck about WoW? Like, just, why would you even offer to put the half a million? I, I don't even understand what was going on there. It's like, it's so clear how little of a fuck you give. Because if these conditions were reported in any mainstream esports title, like, imagine if, I mean, put it this way, you would, Overwatch people would never come out and talk about this because they'd be banned from the league. There's so many secrets, by the way, in, in Overwatch about terrible housing conditions, terrible eating conditions, terrible practice conditions that they, they're too afraid to say because Blizzard have made it abundantly clear. Speak out about the league and you get got. And if you happen to be one of these players in one of these bullshit fucking agencies that work hand in hand with Activision Blizzard, then you're double fucked because you don't get fucked by Blizzard. You get fucked by your agent first, then Blizzard come in and have the sloppy seconds. So, an Overwatch professional couldn't fucking talk about it, but in StarCraft or something else, it would fucking come out, and people would say, this is outrageous, and it cannot go on in this esports, but it's, it's World of Warcraft. So they just gotta put up and fucking shut up, and, and, and Blizzard know that. So, lack of food being provided, people not getting practice, you know, a practice room being available for one day, there's not a CS tournament that operates like that now. Um, and then on top of that, just the absolute lack of respect to, to the fans, the people who bought the toys, the people who watch the the lack of respect to, well, you just don't get to see half the games. So, sorry, we can't accommodate that. And what that, and the knock-on effect that that has for all the people who compete in it and everything else, it's, it's embarrassingly bad. And I didn't know about any of this stuff till I saw this twit longer. And again, where are all the voices at? Like the wow, you know, sure the wow people are talking about this. Sure, this blew up on a Reddit thread, but again, where are the journalists? Where are the big mainstream publications? I thought you liked to speak truth to power, guys. Oh no, did someone say a bad word on a Twitch stream? Must all sit in our Slack groups and write think pieces about that. Where is your reportage about this? Where is it? You don't care. There's no clicks in this. People would have to understand, you know, economics and what Activision Blizzard are doing and the history of the WoW scene, so fuck it, give them a pass. So I'm just... Just sad for all the uh, World of Warcraft uh, competitors that are like, really mate, like 2019 was like a really big year to remember for World of Warcraft for a variety of reasons, not just like the relaunch of Classic, but like all of the effort the community put in to try and get back on that like, you know, back to the pinnacle of, of, of video games. And BlizzCon should have been the ultimate celebration of that. And this is what you end up with. It's just, it's just shocking. It's just really sad. I had no idea it was this bad, man. Heart goes out to them. And remember, we were all protesting, weren't we? We all said, oh, fuck that. Fuck Blizzard. And, and, and we hate you now because of Hong Kong and China and all of that. And Activision Blizzard came out, right? And what did they say? They said, don't worry. We hear you and we will change. And this had nothing to do with our business decisions in China. Nothing. All right, then. Love this story. Great little headline over at Marketplace. US video game giant seeks next approval in China despite controversy over punishing Hong Kong gamer. You mean to say that... Okay, well, I won't... No spoilers. Um, you guys will figure out the timing, I'm sure. You're all intelligent. American game developer Activision Blizzard is seeking approval by Chinese authorities of its best-selling mobile game, Call of Duty, two months after enduring a fan boycott over its punishment of a Hong Kong gamer who criticized the Chinese regime. Hmm. How very interesting. 
how very interesting that Activision Blizzard came out and said, well, we can't control what NetEase say on our Hearthstone accounts in the Chinese region. They're just our partners. So when they say we would never let anyone insult the pride of China, we can't stop them from doing it. And, and what's that? You give a non-apology at BlizzCon about it and say that you didn't act well enough, but you would also do nothing different. Um, oh, and, it's, and, and, and everybody, by the way, has said that I've talked to that the decision came from the highest level, and the highest level with an Activision Blizzard pretty, me, me, pretty much means Bobby Kotick himself. So what you're saying is, just before you have this uh, mobile game launching, and it's doing very well financially, it's one of the biggest mobile games of all time in terms of what it's made in its first month uh, of launch, uh, you had to go begging the Chinese government to sell it out there. In a, in, a, in a country, by the way, that's becoming a bit more terse in its relationship between games and gamers, and they've now got a boycott and a curfew out there and how much you can actually game if you're a kid. Right, very interesting. Very, very interesting. Very interesting, isn't it? The Chinese gaming market is estimated at more than $30 billion, second only to that of, United, of the United States. Still, succeeding in China requires a tricky balancing act, as video games companies as seen going too far to please Beijing can incur the wrath of American players. Case in point, Activision Blizzard subsidiary, Blizzard Entertainment, God, that's an awful phrase right there. For two months, Blizzard has been taking heat for punishing a, champ uh, a champion player for his comments in an online broadcast supporting ho the Hong Kong protests. Liberate Hong Kong, the player known by the handle Blitz Chung proclaimed in an interview during a Blizzard-hosted gaming tournament. Um, Blizzard suspended Blitz Chung and then confiscated his winnings. There's no doubt in my mind that Blizzard took that action to protect or expand its position inside China, American Charlie Mosley, head of the Chengdu Gaming Federation in Western China said. There's only a very small number of developers and publishers which will even have the opportunity to get inside China, and Blizzard is on that small list. Blizzard denied it sanctioned the player to please Chinese authorities, saying it bans all political statements. Even so, the controversy triggered an angry boycott from many gamers. Weeks later, the company backtracked and gave the punished player his winnings back. Um, where's the last bit? Uh, this bit. Uh, Immutable, a developer whose game Gods and Chain competes heads on with Blizzard's Hearthstone, launched a drive to recruit players in Hong Kong. Gods and Chain has seen record downloads. I think we saw small and big companies looking to point out they are supportive of political free speech and that their games are aligned with a gamer community that is generally irreverent but probably leans on the side of Hong Kong independence, uh, Sail Lily, China analyst at the Rand Corporation think tank said. So this is another game, by the way, one of their rivals essentially, that went the other way and said, listen, we're actually going to just market directly to Hong Kong itself record downloads uh, for a game that actually competes with Activision Blizzard. Remember, it's nothing to do with China, though. Nothing to do with appeasing China, even though now we have a fucking bench test that shows you could just market to Hong Kong directly and probably see a lot of financial benefit. Nothing to do with China. Nothing to do with China. Lily said it's unclear whether Blizzard has taken a financial hit from the player sanction, but long-term industry executive Mike Fisher, who lectures at the University of Southern California, said the company has incurred reputational damage. It is very challenging to please gamers in two different markets, Fisher said. In general, gamers in China prioritize patriotism, whereas those in the United States emphasize freedom of speech. The Chinese fans have their own feelings and their own opinions, Fisher said, and I don't know that it's possible to make everyone happy. So, remember, Blizzard told us they were going to do better, but we m absolutely cannot do better while we've got this new game to sell in China. We we've got to get it out there. Um, 2020, let's talk. Once we've had the first wave of the millions come in, we'll we'll talk about doing better for you. Don't worry about it. And, you know, fuck Hong Kong and uh, fuck anyone else. Because uh, we just got to make all that money. We just got to make all that paper. It's just how it is. So, incredible scenes. Basically, games developers suck. <laughs> but I think we knew that already, didn't we? I think we were we were all there.